Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video. I know it has once again been a little wee while and I know that a lot of you are getting hyped up for some big epic mission because I've been away for a couple of months but the truth is I just haven't been playing KSP at all. Uh, it's been like the Christmas period, work's been busy, I've been busy making Space News videos, I just haven't had much of a chance to play Kerbal Space Program. And until this week just gone by I thought, you know what, I'd like to make a colony because I haven't made a, a surface base in a little while and not too too long ago I made a video showcasing a folding base concept that used the hinges and uh, a Kerbal adding struts to make a base that's like a nice compact shape when it launches and then it all unfolds. But I didn't really like that base for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it involved an egregious amount of part clipping to the point where it was completely ridiculous and unrealistic and it wasn't fully autonomous. It still required a Kerbal going out on EVA and manually attaching struts which felt like a bit of a messy solution. So this is the new and improved version. Uh, it's fully autonomous when it comes to the unfolding. A Kerbal doesn't need to go out and weld anything together as you can kind of see from the build going on. It locks itself into place using those little junior sized docking ports that are attached to alligator hinges on the base of the module and the way I've got around the part clipping issue, well I should probably preface this by saying the reason the previous folding base concept I made uh, had part clipping is because I liked having the um I don't know how to describe them, those, pa those passenger modules that surround that tower there. I liked them to be flush with the central tower so that it was believable that a Kerbal could transfer from the central tower into one of the uh, peripherally mounted compartments uh, via internal transfer, basically. But with that big hinge there, um, that wouldn't really be possible. So I had to just sort of clip the hinge inside the base in order to make it look like it was part of the same module if that makes sense looked better when it was unfolded but the whole concept was much more unrealistic for obvious reasons but i've came up with a solution that kind of changes this a little bit still involves a bit of park clipping but it's a bit more convincing and it looks it feels a lot more like something that could be done in real life uh, it's now gone i'm building another module on screen but i will just continue pressing on regardless uh, you may have caught it very briefly in the build video but i'm using the inflatable air dot airlocks uh, basically the hinges aren't central on the unfolding bits uh, they're offset slightly so when they when the arms unfold the airlock inflates and it creates a nice little compartment to allow Kerbals to transfer from the central block into one of the arm pieces uh, convincingly basically. I know the uh, the uh, the uh, inflatable airlocks are still clipped in but you just imagine that a shorter inflatable airlock would be used in real life. That's that's the kind of the concept I started this with and I thought uh, it's kind of a, a small base still. I couldn't really have anything meaningful on the actual arms themselves without requiring part clipping if I wanted to keep the payload at a fairly realistic diameter so I thought instead let's just build a completely separate building that lands next to the uh, the module I just built it could be an uninhabited thing so a ore refinery basically and then I'll add a third module this can just be the rover I decided to make a rover that was nice and wide in order to avoid it you know in order to reduce the chance of it flipping over uh, ignore that massive science junior unit I decided to just get rid of that because it's so ugly and cumbersome uh, but this is the rover here now, my initial kind of thought for making these foldable modules like this is because they would fit in a realistic looking rocket. I'm sure you could squeeze them into something that looks a lot like a Ariane 5 or a Starship or a Delta IV Heavy or basically any kind of heavy lift or super heavy lift rocket. You can They can fold into a, a good re realistic looking uh, payload fairing. But then I thought, oh, this video is probably going to be quite long because this build process here, uh, it's quite a long winded process anyway so that's quite a lot to the video there's lots of modules if I'm launching lots of realistic looking rockets it's gonna drag the video out so instead I'm gonna just pack them into a realistically sized pay uh, payload fairing diameter wise but then they're all gonna be just stacked inside one rocket so it's gonna be a very realistically it's gonna be a realistic payload fairing I should say uh, in terms of its width but it's gonna be very very tall so it's not gonna be totally realistic but it does cut cut down time on the video and I get the impression that people generally prefer seeing big crazy single launch things rather than multiple launch things that are then docked together in low curve in orbit because I don't know a bit more fun watching a massive rocket fly and uh, 
uh, cuts down on kind of the finicky process of docking things in low carbon orbits. Here we are, stocking all the stocking, stacking. I think I was trying to say docking, and then I changed that to stacking, and ended up saying stocking. We're stacking the modules that I've just built all on top of each other, and then we're going to add uh, a payload fairing to encapsulate them all, and then I'll uh, just put a big dumb rocket underneath it. Uh, ended up looking a little bit SLS esque. Uh, it was a big orange core stage flanked by two solid rocket boosters so looks a bit like an sls i suppose there's the fairing base i'm not actually using the saturn 5 parts i'm using the uh the mammoth scale parts a three is it 3.75 meters i think it's 3.57 3.75 meters um that, that's the, gonna be the diameter of the tank that i use so i think this is dlc proof i mean you still need the breaking ground robotics but i'm not sure if i actually use any making history parts on this build, I'm now just racking my brains trying to think if I used any parts from the Making History or D Making History DLC. I don't think these SRBs are in Making History, are they? So I, I think if you've only got Breaking Ground, this craft might work. I mean, the craft file I'm probably not going to put that in the description because I like encouraging people to design their own surface bases because designing surface bases is one of the more fun things to do in Kerbal Space Program, I think. And uh, you know, it's a good way of expressing yourself creatively. So. Sorry about that. And also, you know, I, I just can't be bothered. Anyway, that's pretty much the build done. There it is on the launch pad. As you can see, there's no launch escape system for any crew. So I'm not going to be launching the crew with this flight. So I know I technically advertise this as a single launch base, but I'm going to do a secondary launch just to bring some Kerbals up to space, get them on board. And for another very, very important reason that will be made manifest when we get there. But I'm going to cross that bridge when it comes. For now, we just got the ascent. It's a, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I said it looks a little bit SLS esque, this thing, but it's, uh, it's a very elongated SLS. Was that almost a pun? Because Elon Musk, Elon Gate, it wasn't really. Uh, as you can see, oh, as, sorry, as you can hear, very quiet. I don't know why the audio didn't record again. I'm having real hit and miss issues with uh, NVIDIA recording software at the moment. Sometimes videos will just record the audio absolutely fine. In fact, most of the time that is the case. But then occasionally it doesn't record the audio at all. Which is a real shame because then, you know, it makes the video not as good. I'm still trying to figure out why this is. Like, I had headphones on when I was recording this and the game was making sound. And I haven't really got, I haven't got like loads of different sound cards or anything. I've only got one output device on this PC. So I'm not really sure what went wrong there. So I will continue to uh, strive to get my audio problems fixed. But for now, unfortunately, that means that this video is going to be silent. Anyway, we are now... Um, rapidly approaching low curb in orbit. I've got those uh, skipper engines on that upper stage to kick us into a nice stable orbit. There we are. Now we need to get ready to build the next rocket. Don't worry, it's nowhere near as long a process as it was for the rocket that you just saw get built. This is going to be the crew rocket and also the ore scanner. That's right. <laughs> so um, one of the modules on the big rocket I just launched was an ore refinery. So I thought, let's try and actually land somewhere with lots of ore because I've done lots of bases in my, you know, Kerbal Space Program career. And I never, ever, 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 I don't think I ever, ever have <laughs> checked to make sure where I'm landing the base is actually somewhere with ore. So I land the base, deploy the drills, and there's literally no ore in the ground and the base is useless, which I know is kind of uh, ironic given that bases are useless anyway for the most part. But, you know, it's nice to have the base look nice and also it, it can actually function as intended. So I thought this time... I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to deploy a satellite into uh, MUN orbit. This is going to be a MUN base, by the way. I'm going to put a satellite in orbit around the MUN, and that's going to scan the ground to look for any kind of big ore veins, and we're going to land the base in a place with lots of ore. So that's what this launch is going to be here. And, of course, it has a crew module on top with a launch escape system, so it's nice and safe for the crew. And we're going to bring the crew to the uh, station. Now, um, the, the, the station ultimately will have four crew members, but that wasn't my plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, my plan was to only have three Kerbals, a pilot, an engineer, scientist, nice, you know, even crowd. But uh, events transpired as the video went on uh, that meant I had to send a fourth Kerbal up to, uh, well, well, well I, I would spoil the surprise, but things went a bit wrong on this mission, <laughs> uh, which was um, one of the reasons why this video is actually a bit delayed. I planned to release it earlier than I released it. I still don't know when I'm going to release it. At the moment, it's it's Saturday, the 8th of January. Uh, normally, I upload Kerbal Space Program on Saturdays, and it's getting on a bit. It's nearly 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
I probably won't have time to finish recording this commentary, you know, proof watch the video, render the video, check all that stuff, upload it. I just can't be bothered. So um, it'll probably be next Saturday. So that's that's why there hasn't been a couple space broken video in a while. Well, at least for this video here. Uh, the other reason that I've not made a couple space broken video in a while is because I've been just too busy. It has been nice, not I've been a bit of, having a nice breather from Kerbal Space Program. Let's not say I don't like playing Kerbal Space Program. I had an absolute blast doing this mission. I think part of the reason why I had so much fun doing this mission, even when things went wrong and, you know, blah, 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 we'll get there as we get there. Uh, even when things went wrong, it wasn't like a big stressful moment because, oh yes, I'm no longer working to a strict you know, weekly deadline. I can just say, oh well, I guess I'm going to have to make some fixes here and the video is going to be a bit late, but the video will hopefully be funnier as a result and I'll have more fun making it so hopefully then my, my enjoyment kind of reflects what's happening on screen rather than me getting all frustrated that things haven't gone well I don't really know uh, if any of this makes sense but that's kind of the thought process there so I I don't know I mean I, I had I did I made a video a few months ago now saying that maybe I'd like to try doing more ambitious missions and just do them like every four months like other Kerbal Space Program channels uh, do but honestly like I feel like the massive epic missions like what Strats and Blitz recently did a big spin launch on Mimus which was amazing and oh my gosh that just did not look like a fun video to film I mean uh, I haven't spoken to Strats and Blitz in a while but I feel like um, Strats and Blitz you know built of a different built from a different metal how does the phrase go again? Uh, he, he bred from a different cloth I don't know uh, he he enjoys um, I guess he hates himself, possibly. But those missions, uh, they look so horrible. Like, launching the rocket could take, like, four hours. And, ah, oh, it just doesn't look that fun, does it? And then you, I can just imagine me doing something like that. And then I spend, like, 20 hours basically bolted to my PC, controlling it, watching it go at one FPS. And then I get to this really critical part of the mission, 20 hours in, and, oh, something's gone wrong. i got to start again. And I think I would just lose my mind. And I don't think that would really, like I say, me having fun, not too stressed in these videos, reflects well in, in terms of the content. I think the opposite would happen if I was doing, subjecting myself to horrific levels of stress. So I think a healthy balance needs to be struck. Maybe this could be it. Just sort of not like impossible missions. Like this is still like a replicatable mission for most players with you know some level of experience. And it's also kind of a fun a fun little adventure. Anyway, I failed to address really anything that was happening on screen, but uh, I feel like most of the video sort of did the talking for me. What I'm doing now, now the Kerbals have disembarked from this vessel, is I'm just placing it into a Kerbal, a Kerbal? A placing it into a polar orbit around the moon. To use the resource scanner, you need to be in a polar orbit. So just in case anyone uh, puts it into an equatorial orbit for realizing that, make sure you get into a polar orbit. Uh, relatively little inclination as well. And then we can, now we're here, parked in a polar orbit. I'm going to right click it and press toggle. Well, I'm going to uh, do the scan, perform orbital survey, and then we can toggle the overlay, uh, which I'm going to click in a second because it's done scanning. Oh, there we are. And then we're going to open the map screen. And, oh, hang on. There we are. There's the overlay. So you can kind of see how it works when it, when it was there. Uh, kind of the brightness of the pink uh, dictates kind of how much ore is there. So I'm going to bump up the threshold so it needs to be quite a concentrated level of ore uh, for it to show up on the overlay. And then I'm just going to uh, scout out a good location to land the refinery. So I spent a little while playing around with the cutoff percentage buttons try and figure out a good spot that was in a nice fun location like I didn't want to land somewhere on the pole because the poles can be a real nightmare to land bases on because they're so mountainous and hilly um, which is actually unfortunate because most of the places with ore <laughs> were mountainous and hilly uh, so I, in the end I settled on this spot on the equator nice and easy to land on because we can just put ourselves into an equ equatorial orbit fairly trivially and uh, that actually that's it it's it's just a spot i chose i suppose but it, it is easier to consistently land in the same spot if you're coming from the equator which obviously we're going to be coming from because i've got to land three separate modules uh, in the same space so that's that's what i'm going to do so we're going to just burn our way up to the mun's up to the mun make a new node circularize the mun and um 
and that's it. Now I've just got to just but nothing to really talk. Well, thing is, I've got something to talk about very specifically when it happens on screen, which is going to be happening in the next couple of minutes. So I don't want to start this massive tangent about something and then uh, it happens on screen. And meanwhile, I'm talking about, I don't know, George Foreman's or something like that. Something that I would talk about. Not that I would um, talk about George Foreman's. Uh, the, um, when I say George Foreman's, I mean like the grills, like the cooking, the cooking things. Um, are they like for grilling like meats and stuff like bacon and things? I have thought about getting one actually. So George Foreman, if you're watching this video uh, and would like to uh, sponsor this channel, then hook me up. I'll, I'll do a cooking with Matt. I actually considered doing a cooking with Matt video back in like 2019. I was going to make a curry, but then I thought that would be not really in keeping with what happens on this channel. So I decided not to do that. But now I've sort of started uploading Matt Lown 2 videos a lot more frequently, like my second channel. Then um, maybe that's a good like Matt Lown 2. My second channel is quickly becoming the Matt Lown variety channel slash the Matt Lown mountain biking channel. So if you like the sound of that, then you can subscribe to my second channel. And oh, look at that. I, I actually did it. I end up unironically going on a tangent about George Foreman's. There we are. How fun. Anyway, this is the thing I kind of wanted to talk about, which is the order in which I am landing the modules. The first thing I'm going to land is the rover. Because, like I say, this base, okay, it's got a fairly wide stance, so it can land in most places. But I'd like for realism and, you know, for the sake of the comfort of the uh, base's inhabitants, I'd like to land it somewhere relatively flat. Which can be hard to do when I'm landing the, uh, the modules themselves, because they haven't got that much delta V. They've only got slightly more than what they need to perform the landing. So I thought what I'll do is I'll land the rover first. Uh, and I can just land that anywhere and I can just drive the rover around and try and find somewhere relatively flat and once I found somewhere relatively flat I can then park the rover there and then when I'm using when I'm landing the other modules I can use the location of the rover as like my target for where to land I did try the other way around at first admittedly where I just tried landing the the, the modules and I thought I'll oh, just quick load I'll quick load and quick save and do that over and over until I just happen to land somewhere flat and it turns out this location that I picked it's really, really hilly. You probably saw that big ravine as I was coming in. And I thought, you know what, let's just land, land, let's just land the river first. And then we'll figure out. Um, then, then we'll easily plant a flag or use a kerbal or something as a marker. And then we can just aim at that when it comes to landing the other module. So here we are. I'm just uh, driving the rover. I, in the end, I kinda, you can kind of see there's this sort of slope and then it slopes upwards again in a second. And where the downward slope meets the upward slope, there's like a nice join. There'll be, it's pretty flat and a base could easily straddle this little join just here. So this is the location I chose. A little bit of drifting there on the man, as you do. Uh, so yeah, didn't quite get to the location I wanted. Thought I'd try and be really accurate with my marking and use Gwenlo Kermum. She's going to very bravely stand here as the marker for where the rockets need to land. So hopefully she doesn't get squished. There we are. Just going to touch down. Touch down nicely. There we are. So, my goodness, doesn't the mum look good? I still haven't gotten over the uh, the Ultra Textures up update that came out, gosh, ages ago now, isn't it? But it still looks absolutely phenomenal. And you might have noticed that my game in general, uh, hopefully, looks really, really good as well. That's because I'm using lots of visual mods. My last video I made was, um, well, my last Kerbal Space Program video I made, I should say, was what mods I'm using and how to install them. So if you want to do that, then just click on, if you go on my channel, there's a playlist of Kerbal Space Program videos, it's the most recent one, or if you're watching this in the future, then I don't know, I'm sure if you just type in Matt Lown mods, how visual mods, how to make the game look good, it will come up somewhere near the top of the search results. Anyway, as you can see, I've set what was the name? Gwenlo as our target, so I could just easily aim for that little reticule now, uh, nice and easily. I don't have to worry about trying to desperately search for some uh, flat level of ground whilst also trying to time my suicide burn with a ship that doesn't have that much delta V in like surplus, and it doesn't have great thrust to weight ratio either. So this was kind of the easiest way of doing things. Because as you can see, where Gwenlo is, it's not immediately apparent that that is a flat spot. So it's a good thing we've got her to mark out the location. And there we are, we've deployed the landing legs. I'm using the uh, medium-sized landing legs, not the biggest ones, because... Oh, and this is going to be difficult to explain without a visual A, but I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> when the arms, like those little crew modules, were folded in, the uh, legs were kind of on the end like that. Now, the big <laughs> the, the big legs, they, ha they would jut 
outwards and they would stick inside the central lab module, if that makes sense. They have a big protrusion when they're folded up, whereas these landing legs have a pretty, you know, flat profile when they're folded up. I don't know if that made sense, but if you just look at kind of the big landing legs and look at these landing legs in the editor, you'll probably hopefully be able to tell. Anyway, as you can see, I kind of undershot. I didn't quite land at the place I wanted to. We're on a bit of a slope. So I thought, well, let's just let's just walk there. So I, I used the gimbal of the Terrier engines to uh, walk the base over to Gwenlo Kerbin, which I, I, I can't. I can't quite believe this worked, but hey-ho, it did. So there you are. When in doubt, just walk your base over to where you want it to go. And uh, and there we are. We are here. Let's just uh, extend those landing legs again. And there we are. The core module is landed. This module had the least amount of delta V, and it had the poorest thrust-to-weight ratio of all the things we need to land. So it's good to get this one ticked off. I'm just at disengaging all the motors now and locking them in place so that it doesn't drain any power unnecessarily and just keeps the base a bit more stable in my mind. I don't know if it actually does in terms of the game's physics, but it feels like it should keep it more stable, right? And then we can have everything, you know, deployed. The ladder's extended and I've got a little um cal controller. You can see that antenna at the top. I've got a little cal controller that just makes that hinge at the top ping back and forth with that big satellite dish to make it look a bit more, I don't know, sci-fi and cool. And as you can see, those inflatable airlocks have inflated as well with the press of an action group. So you can see, hopefully what I meant, how like a Kerbal could believably transfer through the, you know, the lab, through the hinge into those side arms through the, um, by going through the inflatable docking port. Anyway, then it came time to land this refinery module here and here we are in orbit ready to perform our landing and then i'm going to skip ahead to actually the point where i landed it because i made a bit of a blunder here guys and i know you guys probably know where i'm going with this where i said a fourth kerbal ended up joining the expedition and that's because look no i i don't know why i didn't actually test the clearance of the drills and i deployed them and uh, they just lifted the module off its legs. I thought, no worries, I'll get our engineer Kerbal out on EVA and she can move the drills upward, but actually the MUN's gravity is too high for an engineer to adjust those drills. So I couldn't really bother to do the whole mission again. So I thought, let's just quick load to my last quick save, which happened to be when the mining, the refinery module was still in MUN orbit. And I'll quickly just go and send an engineer up to go and change the location of the drills while the module is in orbit, because you can modify the placement of drills when on a either a body with sufficiently low gravity or if the module is in space, which, you know, it is if it's in MUN orbit. I know technically the MUN surface is also in space, but you guys know what I meant, so don't go in before you go buying in the comments. Um, that I, I just, just don't worry, guys. Anyway, here we are launching this fairly, you know, there's absolutely nothing special about this rocket whatsoever. It's just um, a little Mark 1 crew cabin, not got a parachute or anything like that because I'm, I'm planning on just disposing of it once it's served its purpose. That's why it's got a crew module, not crew module, a uh, probe core on board so that it can just deorbit itself, crash into the MUN nice and harmlessly. And that's also why I've packed a crew command seat with it so uh when the kerbin does when the kerbal does the fix for the drills she can also weld a little seat onto the refinery so she can just coast down to the surface of the man nice and safe so uh yeah there we are just uh getting a nice quick and quick and easy man encounter forming a burn i don't know if there's anything else i needed to talk about specifically with this rocket but i don't think there is so then it's just me just I've, I've already outlined what I need to do now so now I feel a bit of a, a bit at a loss of what else to say about this part of the this phase of the mission or this mission in general really I mean most of the mission is now done you guys can click off if you want don't do that though because uh, I'm desperate for money as you guys all know I spent a lot of money over Christmas as as you all do uh, giving gifts tis the season of giving after all uh, please sign up to my Patreon. No, that was really tacky and terrible, don't you? Well, I mean, if you want to, but I'm digging myself a hole. Let's move on. How, what, how, how, was everyone's, how was everyone's Christmas and New Year? Or a uh, holiday season, if you don't celebrate Christmas, or, you know, that's, that, or that sort of razz jazz. Um, I, I visited my parents. That's why there wasn't a space this week on last, uh, the Monday in between Christmas and New Year. Marcus House, what a champion. Didn't he up, did he upload on Christmas Day? I think he did. That's the mark of a true professional right there. Anyway, I, I didn't because I'm an idiot. But uh, uh, yeah, here we are performing our rendezvous with the refinery. I just went for a slightly kind of eccentric orbit like this. Then I can just use the skip orbit button on the maneuver node maker to easily get an encounter. There you go. Pretty much effortless to get an encounter there. Then I'm just playing around the maneuver node. You know how this goes. 
What else is new in the world of Matt whilst we're, whilst we're, we don't really get to sit down and have these chats anymore, do we guys? Because, you know, Space This Week, whilst it is still me, I can assure you it is still me, I do write the scripts and, you know, edit the videos myself, but it is a lot more formal, like it's not as conversational as I think my Kerbal Space Program videos are. So I get like, I just like, I'm sitting back here in my pyjamas, it's really horrible weather outside today, so I can't go out, so I'm stuck inside in my pyjamas. I've got my feet up on a footrest. I'm just sitting back in my chair, kicking back with a uh, with a cold, refreshing glass of water. I'm do I'm doing dry I'm doing dry January. It's 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 day eight for me. Uh, it's it's um, Friday and Saturday always the tough ones, aren't they? Because like Friday and Saturday, like oh let's go out and have a drink, but um, I can't. I'm doing dry January, so it's a uh, lemonade for me in the evenings if I want to have a drink that's not water. And, uh, yeah, I guess it's easy to do dry January at the moment, isn't it? Because of, you know, the uh, whole COVID thing. It's a bit dangerous to go out to restaurants and bars and stuff. So it's a bit easier than in past years where I'd be going out to the pub to meet friends a lot more frequently, where there'd be a lot more of a temptation. So, um, so yeah, doing dry January with, uh, with Beth, my girlfriend. So wish us luck. Hopefully when this video goes out, we haven't caved and just had a bottle of wine or something on a nice Friday night treat. But, uh... Eh, it's going well, whatever. Anyway, oh, our Kerbal is here. We can now do the thing. <laughs> Did you see me um, deorbit the capsule by the This is why I like to generally outline what I'm about to do before I do it, because when it gets to the point where I'm doing the thing that I was going to talk about, I'm then on a massive tangent about Dry January or George Foreman's or something else ridiculous. So that's why I just outline what I'm going to do beforehand so that when it comes to uh, doing the thing, it's all right. I don't have to worry about talking about it specifically because I've already discussed it. So I can go ahead and waffle on to my heart's content. But then it is a double-edged sword because then I will talk about a mission really, really quickly and really briefly at the beginning of the video. Talk about all the key things and then for the next half hour, I'm then desperately just trying to think of things to talk about whilst the video, whilst the video plays out as I had laid it out. Before it all happened, if that made uh, if that made sense, I've said I've said if that made sense quite a lot in this video. So I do hope this whole video was was at least somewhat coherent and not a complete train wreck or spaceship wreck. If we're trying to be on topic, anyway, uh, I didn't actually test the drills again, did I? In orbit, so hopefully they. I just sort of eyeballed it and said, yeah, that looks about okay. Which in retrospect was a terrible idea because that's what I did when I built this in the vehicle assembly building without testing it. Though in my defence, I did build it at like two o'clock in the morning because <laughs> I couldn't sleep, so I just said, I'm gonna play Kerbal Space Program for a bit. Uh, so I just built it and I was like, that looks cool, looks fine. I'll launch it tomorrow. I'm gonna go to bed. And I woke up in the morning saying, right, let's fly that rocket, forgetting that I hadn't tested anything. Um, but I did have a little uh, thought as another colony idea. I suddenly remembered that the ground anchor is a thing in this game now, isn't it? So I used that to build a Mun arch bay. Oh, got my uh, landing accuracy a little bit too spot on there, didn't I? So I built a, uh, with a ground anchor, I built a Mun arch base, which is the first thought that came to mind when I saw that part. And I built that Mun arch base and I was really happy with that. Probably one of my favourite videos that I made last year, but yeah, that's what I did with that. But then I had another idea, and that is maybe a ghillie base, because ghillie bases were always basically impossible because Gilly's surface gravity is so low that you basically just bounce off the surface. You can't really land on it. But with a ground anchor, I could build a gravity-defying base uh, in, in that I can have the base stay on the ground, but because there's basically no real surface gravity to contend with, I can have it be like this really wacky tall structure, like a really thin spire with a massive big blocky structure at the top of the spire, maybe almost like a, um, is it the Jetsons? You know that classic, I never saw the Jetsons, but obviously because American pop culture is so ubiquitous on the internet, I'm kind of aware of it. Is it Jet, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I don't know if you can hear my mechanical keyboard, but I'm now just, uh, googling Jetsons. Yeah, yeah, the Jetsons intro. Uh, it's got those buildings on really thin, ta like, spires, that sort of thing. Um, I think it was just one image and I can't see any other images on Google search now, so maybe I'm wrong. But, but basically a really big building on top of a tiny thin tower on the surface of Gilly. I thought it might be a fun thing to do with the ground anchor. And as you can see, whilst I was waffling my way through all of that, you can see I've deployed the uh, drills and they are, they, 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 they are now fine. Everything is now fixed. I can start up the uh, excavation process and we can start gathering some ore. I mean, it's completely unusable because there's no docking port on that refinery, which is probably an oversight on my part. I mean, I know, I know something could go up with a claw and extract ore, but I guess it would have been more realistic to have docking ports. Oh, well, you live and learn. This is all really just a fun activity. You know, building bases is fun. They don't really serve any 
real practical purpose, at least bases like this anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, the bases are just fun to build, aren't they? And happy 2022, the first Kerbal Space Program video that I've made of the year. Hopefully there'll be more to come. Thank you also to my patrons whose names are scrolling on screen on the left. And also big thanks to uh, my channel members as well who get these videos early. I'll pro they probably got this video early. That's probably what I'll do. Uh, if you want to join their ranks, you can press join below the video. There's also two videos on screen that are suggested to you by YouTube's algorithm. If they look interesting, hopefully then you can click them if you want. I don't care. And thank you for watching. Uh, goodbye.